connecting to cloud server. Okay, it's recording now. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we have like uh, quite a few participants already. Thanks again for joining on like Saturday morning. It's not easy at all after a long week of work, uh, but it shows the commitment. So let's start the session. In the first session, we covered the basics of IAC, DevOps, how did this come up, all the concepts of IAC, and little glimpses of Ansible. So in this session, I will, this is like more structured. First one is more of like a glimpses kind, trailer kind. This will be more structured. Uh, let me put it in the full mode. Okay, so, so this was like uh, started by testing and DevOps groups, started by Kaja, uh, this guy here, my friend. So that's a good thing. He's, uh, he's planning lots of sessions. So if you have any ideas, you can talk to him. And uh, this, is, this is the team that started this uh, TDG meetup group, Rakesh, Sai, and Kaja. And uh, Kaja likes to start with some quotes. So this is his quote. You cannot evolve unless you're willing to change. Okay, this is me. Um, so like I have been in, uh, I have already introduced before, but for the sake of you guys, I have been uh, in QA for a long, long time. I have tried many other roles, but uh, most part of it is in the testing domain. Um, I like to uh, try out new tools. I like to develop frameworks, like try out different frameworks, QA architecture, that's my passion. Okay, overall, this is the agenda for the overall series. We had one session of Ansible. We will have this session and maybe one or two. And then we'll go into Packer and Terraform and the whole end-to-end -end, uh, scenarios and other IAC tools. So someone in the questions, they asked, what is the difference between uh, uh, Chef, Ansible and Puppet? Just want you guys to let you know, our company has acquired Chef last week. Uh, we have no idea about that. So soon maybe we will give a session on Chef. Once the whole acquisition is complete, we will have more access to all the developers everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's public now, so I can talk about that. Okay. So in this chapter, last last week, when I'm demoing, a few of them asked. So just to let you know, I have like few of my colleagues here. Uh, they are like very knowledgeable in this whole IAC concept also. So uh, they can answer some of the questions. So I, questions are sometimes uh, distracting for me during. But if you want, if you have some some issue, if you can't hear me properly, you can speak out uh, directly. Uh, if not, just mute yourself. So last last session, I just showed you glimpses of it. Someone asked me, how do you install it? Uh, so I didn't show it there. So I'll start from there. I'll start from the installation. How do you install? How easy it is? Uh, how do you configure? And Ansible is based on AML. So what is AML? What does it do? and uh, the basics of the AML. We'll go through basics of AML and then again, the real Ansible directory structure, how do you lay out your whole projects? How can you structure them for modularity, for uh, ease of use? So that's what the topics will be. So let's start with the installation. So last week I mentioned Ansible runs, the server runs on Unix machine only. Uh, host, can be, host can be anything. Um, please, can you mute yourself if you are not like uh, asking any questions? There's some background voice. Um, so the server should be Unix. Host can be any machine. Uh, the host can be any kind of machines, combinations of machines, but the server, you should have one Unix machine, which is the server. And to install Ansible, it's straightforward. Uh, if you don't know about package managers, just type yum or uh, chocolatey or DNF. Uh, this is just like a bundle of packages. 
if you want ansible you just say m install ansible and you get the whole package and if ansible needs python it will get that first and then get the answer so it's like a package of things and it takes like a couple of seconds to get the whole installation ready which we will go through uh, there are different package managers for uh, uh, red hat distribution it's dn now i think they're moving to dnf but uh, yum and dnf primarily for ubuntu and all it's apt apt get uh, pip works uh, windows it's chocolatey there might be many more many more coming up uh, many more package managers out there uh, ansible modules require python but ansible gets it but most of the unix machines they come with python now so that shouldn't be a problem uh, once you install you will have the configuration file in etc ansible this is the default location of the configuration file and the host file and uh, so let's like uh, we will do uh, we won't uh, wait for the end for the demo we, we can do like uh, slide by slide what i'll do here is like uh, so whatever we did we will try it out m install ansible okay so it just goes and checks for the latest version it says i found out these things should i install this and uh, yeah, it's like the python thing libsodium and other modules other uh, packages that it needs and it's done so now Shri you have is it possible to increase the font okay i am on 18 are you looking from your mobile <laughs> uh, okay okay all right <laughs> okay uh, does others have the issue with the font i mean if i can increase it a bit but it occupies the whole thing whole screen i'll try 20 kaja yeah, as long as others okay. are fine, fine. I'm looking from the mobile, so yeah, it could be that. <laughs> okay, uh, so I did. I increased it to twenty now. If you still have issues, just let me know. Uh, what happens is when I increase too much, I can't have a separate uh, side by side screens uh, to show how it's happening. So yeah, yeah, so sure, sure. Carry on. Yeah. Now I have Ansible here. I just do version and uh, I should have the latest. So that's straightforward. And if you want to re remove it, say like uh, Ansible, sorry, yum, remove Ansible. And it goes ahead and deletes. So that's, that's straightforward. Okay, and uh, once you, Install Ansible, you will have two files, a configuration file, ansible.cfg, in, in etc, where am I? In etc Ansible, that's the default path. Um, and the host file, these two will come for you. So, for example, since I already installed, okay, it's clean now. Install. Uh, so let's look at uh, config file. So config file by default, if you are trying out small things, you don't have to touch anything. It has uh, details on like uh, what your inventory file should be. That's the host file. If it's a host file, if it's in the default path, you don't have to touch anything, change anything. If you want the name to be different, if you want it in a different location, then you should come here and uh, change the location. For example, if you want to say inventory underscore uh, red hat as your host file for like to maintain all your red hat machines, then you change the file configuration. File. There are other things which we will go through all other parameters, but by default, uh, you don't need to touch this if you are like a basic to intermediate user. If it's like advanced, there are like many things there. Uh, so I installed it here. Now I have Ansible core.cfg and host file. Those are the things. So by default, when I run any YAML file, it looks for the current folder for the config file. If it doesn't find, then it goes to etc Ansible. That's how it is. Or you can also specify it as a con uh, variable. Ansible underscore cfg is the variable, I think. Yeah. Uh, so 
that's how it is. And uh, we talked about a host file. But, uh, I think it's my next thing. So host can be ungrouped host, grouped hosts or ranges. Ungrouped uh, is like, if you are like just working on one machine, you just give the IP address of that machine. Um, and if you are working on a collection, like a uh, set of Linux machines, set of Windows machines, you can group them like with a, uh, with a uh, with open parenthesis, you can group them. And uh, you can have patterns if your uh, if your company follows a specific fat pattern, then you can use the patterns to specify your course. Uh, so there are different ways. Uh, and once you configure, you just have to, if you want to make sure it's all running, you should specify your credentials. In future sessions, I can talk about how to uh, encrypt them all. There are like uh, tools like Vault uh, to protect your passwords. So we can talk about that in future sessions. Um, so this is my host file. What I said was I have a server second. I just grouped it in one thing. I have only one, but still said like uh, created a group called servers and uh, this is my machine. Um, and I provide the, it's like raw way of doing, I provide the connection parameters here. And uh, that's how it can be. And now if I say, um, Ansible all minus M thing. If it checks all the hosts and um, if it's like able to successfully ping connect, then it says like, uh, uh, it gives a success message. That's how you check once you configure your host. Um, to cover here. That's on the host. So basics of uh, Ansible. Ansible is like, um, Ansible playbooks are written in YAML format. So AML is like, um, it's ain't, a, ain't another markup long ways. That's the full form. It's a superset of JSON, but it's very it's much more readable than JSON. If you have seen XML or JSON, it still have a lot of braces and all, but this is like much more readable and it's a superset. I didn't try out, they said like you can, um, uh, you can compile JSON files using AML it's like a superset, more simple to understand, more easy. Uh, if you want to start, start with Ansible. Uh, so you should indent with spaces, not tabs. It's very strict there. So it annoys you if you are using a, a VI editor or a, anything like, um, uh, for example, let me start here. Here and here. Even a, so last week we have looked at this script, even a small syntax, I'll just remove a spacing here. Um, and you cannot ansible play, it just gives you an error. It's very strict there. So if you are trying it for the first time, use any of the editors like uh, VS Code or uh, Atom. They are plugins for uh, Ansible, uh, YAML. And uh, it gives you the error right when you're typing it, if you have done some, some mistake there. Uh, so it's better, better to use some of the editors. I use VS Code. VS Code is good, but there are many other editors there. Now it should work. Uh, thing that I don't want to do anything there. So when you're starting, just you need to know basic. There are many things when you go deep, but uh, there are three kinds of uh, variables. If you know them, most of the Ansible, fifty percent, uh, you can do it. Fifty, seventy percent. There are like scalar variables, which are like just the name value pairs. And then there are like list where you can specify a list. And the third one is like a dictionary, uh, like a hash. 
uh, those are the three things that you need to know if you are starting with uh, ansible or yaml and yaml files optionally begins with if you look at some of the ansible playbooks they all start with triple dots most of them that's like yaml uh, syntax but even if you don't put the dots it doesn't uh, affect anything it just that's their uh, uh, what do you call well, that's their way of doing it starts with three dots and ends with three dots the yaml file but it's not mandatory anything uh, so regular whatever like other java languages say variable should start with a letter it cannot have spaces all that all those are like uh, similar to other programming languages nothing uh, nothing specific okay and if you have to define variables where's is the thing we can look at one of the sample script So what I have here is like uh, same. I mentioned my host thing. That's the first thing you should mention. Where should this happen? Um, yeah, I don't. If someone has missed the last session, that's that's the first thing you have to. Once you configure the host thing, you have to specify the host machine, the host. Uh, uh, what host do you want to act on? You have to specify that part here uh, during the start. And all variables are declared within the VARS key, uh, with the VARS thing. So under VARS, uh, you should declare your variables. I have some variables here. Um, I can also add a dictionary if you want to see how a, a dictionary looks like. Uh, we can uh, We can go here. So first let's run this and then we can add a dictionary. I said, this is my variables and I'm saying, I'm using Ansible uh, module, debug module, so just print. Debug module is for printing things. So the variable should be, if you want to print the value of the variable, it should be double parenthesis. This is the syntax. So I'm printing my name and uh, it's just the second, uh, second one, third one from the participant. So I will do Ansible playbook. Yeah, it printed uh, the, my name there and the third, third item from the list. Uh, this is all like extra things that are enabled in the configuration file, which I'll talk about. I want to understand how much time my Ansible is taking when I'm uh, when I'm doing these operations just to see like if I can fine tune anything. Uh, so we'll talk about this. So I added like uh, extra things there. So we can also add a dictionary here. The indentation should be proper. Uh, so we can add this. It's always spaces. If you try to indent, nothing works. That's why I said use like an editor. That's much better. Uh, but like you have to copy paste and also and just use two things. Uh, so I have an address thing, which house number and the street. And uh, let me, oh, sorry. Copy this. And paste. And I want add this dot host number, maybe. Oops. Let's running the same thing. So my house number is one. I just only only paste only like uh, uh, printing the just the value. I can say my house number is one. 
that kind of thing. So that's the basic basics of YAML. As you go through, you can uh, do a lot of other things. But to start with playbook, place, tasks, variables, this should take you up to that part, 30, 50, 40%, 50% of all your work. Um, so a little more details, other details on like uh, uh, the basics are done. Uh, so you also need like loops, error handling, loops, conditions. Uh, so we can look at the basics and then go into details. So, uh, so gather facts is whenever I do something, whenever I connect to a machine, um, not this one, it goes and gathers lot of facts. Those are all again the variables, a uh, lot of facts of that machine. See that that took the max amount of time, 3.31 seconds. Others are like uh, pretty fast. So whatever operations you do here, I'm not doing anything. But even if you connect to remote thing and do things, they're pretty, pretty fast. But gathering for our facts, they, uh, it took three seconds because they are like a lot of uh, facts that it gathered about the uh, remote host, like the operating system, IP address, architecture, uh, lot of things if you look at ansible gather facts it gives you like a I don't know, 40 50 kind of facts that it gathers so we can look at why it's important like i can give you an example anyone has a question or um so when you are the uh, when you are like want to install something you want to say like if the operating system is ubuntu do these things if the operating system is red hat uh, do this. So how do you know? Uh, I mean, if you know it and you configure the host that way, that's a different story. Uh, but if you don't know, if you have a list of IP addresses, uh, then it goes, checks whether it's like um, Red Hat. If yes, it will install. That is done by gather facts. Um, I don't know what I have. Okay, I just printed here Ansible OS family. Uh, so let's run this. Um, okay, here. Yeah. So Red Hat, my family is like uh, what I'm trying to do with my remote machine, which is my other one, this one. Uh, it went and gathered the facts and it said red, red hat. So what happens is when you write a playbook, by default, gather facts is turned on. So if you don't specify anything, it is turned on. So if you don't want to gather facts to save some time, you should explicitly say like, do not gather facts. Gather facts equal to false. That's all. So now let's run this and see what it says. Uh, I'm asking for the OS family, but I'm not gathering facts there. So it just gave me an error. It's undefined, Ansible OS family. What it does is once it gathers the facts, it fills all these variables with the, with the values. Right now it cannot, because those variables are not fit. So if you can, if you don't know whether you want the facts, you can leave them. You don't have to, um, specify anything and it gathers facts. But if you say like, oh, this looks like taking a lot of time. I know what machines and I don't need any of these uh, facts about the remote. You just don't have to specify this. Uh, you just have to say false by, you have to ex explicitly say false. Uh, there are a lot of other, other things. Like if you Google for gather facts, there are a lot of facts that it gathers. Um, Sometimes you need, sometimes you don't, depending on how you can do. So loops are like, uh, you have where conditions, you have loops and all, like any other operating systems, we don't have to events you. Whenever you need them, you can just go ahead and uh, try them out. Uh, like, uh, for example, in our first session, what we did was uh, we installed HTTPD. Okay, now, for example, we have to install 10 things. I don't have to call this module, uh, M module 10 times. I can pass it as a variable and I can loop through them saying, uh, I want HTTP installed, I have Ansible installed uh, that way. So 
so so we can go to i think we have yeah not uh, typing every, everything to save just save some time but uh, if you want to try out uh, how to do this it just like this is what we have in the session one, the script. Uh, you just have to parameterize this part. And uh, same thing, if you want to parameterize, you just have to stuck. and then you just loop it here i want httpd and i want okay I need a space here and i want ansible and then it loops through all the things ansible playbook i think i have both of them installed on the remote ones just now we installed ansible also uh, so it just says okay for the it should stay okay for both of them that's all it looked through and it said like okay i have them both i have them latest i'm not doing anything and coming out uh, if I uninstall one of this, and run the come to this place, so I don't have HTTPD uninstalled. Running the same again. now it's taking some time but it's pull, like it's pulling all the things it says changed which means um, i didn't find httpd i have installed uh, ansible is there it's the latest so i didn't do anything there i checked uh, so we talked about this in the last session item potency how 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 it looks for everything it's like um, you shouldn't give the steps you just like uh, Say like what should be the state. Uh, that's all. I said state is latest, so it goes and checks. And if it's not latest, uh, it goes and uh, gets it. There are other 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 things you can do. State present. If you don't want, if there is something installed there, some version of HTTPD, and if you don't want to touch, you should just say state as present. Uh, sometimes that's important to say present instead of latest because you might need a particular version which is already installed you don't want to touch it and get the latest that changes the state state of the thing um, so you should be careful in defining like whether you want the latest or you whether you want the present uh, you want to make sure it's there some version is there so depending on that you should do that um, and then there are like um, And you can also do a when when loop like uh, run this command only when the ansible family is a red hat so that's like checking it uh, you can have like a different loop saying that uh, when family is ubuntu run this when family is sometimes across unix operating systems uh, they're like slightly change command slightly change so that's when you use this kind of thing uh, so by default gather facts is true i didn't mention anything that's why this will work if i go ahead and turn off this won't work or uh, so i know that i have a red hat uh, red my remote system is red hat so if i go ahead and say open to here uh, this should fail i mean this should not run playbook is 
Yeah, it skipped it because it's not the same thing. That's one of the state. Uh, if I change it to Red Hat, uh, it will go and run that uh, thing. Yeah, skipping, execute the uh, script. It's skipping because the OS, this OS is different. It's not Ubuntu. Uh, so that's loops, conditions, error handling is, uh, we can go to, we have a like a run a script command that we looked at in uh, last thing. So I'm saying this like, uh, go to remote thing and uh, copy this test.sh file and uh, change the permission and run the script. I actually have a test.sh, not test1.sh, so this should fail. Uh, so when, when, when a module fails, Ansible just comes out. It doesn't execute the next module. But sometimes, even if a module fails, you want to, you want to run it, right? So that's when you can say ignore errors. So uh, this one I can uh, first run and see what it says. Ansible. Playbook run a script. I have a test.sh here if you see, uh, but I said copy test1.sh. So it's not able to find that file. It just came out, didn't do the next ones. Now, if I go here, oops. Um, I think it should be at this level. I said ignore errors equal to two. So there was an error, but it ignored and it went ahead and did the other two things. Uh, so that's what the error handling is about. Um, so we can ask, we can wait for questions after this one. And right now we are writing everything in like uh, uh, one one file, but I can also move variables to a different file, move the only tasks to a different file, and then call them separately. So for example, I have a variables.yaml file where I say I have defined few variables: name, location, and country. Similarly, I have uh, tasks in one file where I'm just printing like uh, OS family, right? These are two different files. Now, I'm including them in an another file. Say like, uh, uh, if you want to call variables, it should be include underscore vars. This is a module. So it should be in task. If you write it anywhere else, you'll get an error. So previously I was like, uh, when I'm starting with it, I said, oh, this is a variable. Why can't I put in var section? It doesn't work. It should be, it's a module. Include vars is a module, include tasks is a module. So it should be in the task section. So if you want to call variables, it should be include underscore vars. Import is, uh, I think, deprecated. Import underscore var should also work, but I think they're deprecating that. Uh, if it tasks include underscore tasks, what it does is it first uh, takes all this variable. So what I'm saying is print the variable my name, which I defined here, and uh, it runs this task, whatever is there, and prints the OS family. That's how we should include. This is the whole power. I'll show you why this is all important so when I show you the whole Ansible directory structure. Okay, so Ansible playbook includes dot Emma. So it went like it all, it did all the printing, whatever I have. Uh, So this should be here. 
uh, if you say like, I will put it here. It does not, it just does not work. Even if you try, it just gives an error. Okay. So that's on the includes. So the last one here, there are many more things, but these are the basic things that you might need. Uh, and where, as you start, you might have a scenario where you might need something else, uh, then you can just query and get them. As we go through also, if you need something, we will cover them if we need more things. Um, the last one is handlers. So, so this is same as like, uh, if you know event handlers in Java, uh, that same, same thing. So what, what we did here is uh, in our first session, I said, go and install and uh, these things and then start, right? Uh, but if by any chance, if they are not installed, I don't have to do this. So I can write a handler and uh, say like only install when these two are like done. Uh, so I, I can notify when these are done and then I can, um, uh, I can do the operation of that. Handlers part. Uh, okay. So to make it simple, I can just. So now I'll say here, once this is done, notify of this task. The task can be ensure Apache is running, right? Okay. And then I should have a handlers. I am we let's run and see what happens here. So host server something we didn't uh, it's definitely some indentation that we missed. Spelling and ah, thanks. Thanks, Brahma. Okay. Good. Yeah, so it went ahead and uh, uh, since it's the latest, uh, it's already there. It just goes and execute this. And if it's somehow was not able to install, um, it doesn't have to run this. So it will skip this part. Same as event handlers in Java. The handlers part, you need them just to ensure that when you have this all in a a large environment, you need all these checks to make sure you're doing this properly. So I'll pause for a second. Any questions so far? These are the basics. Now we can, uh, I'll just go through this also. Like last last session, someone asked, what are the different task status? So these are the main ones uh, that I found out. There might be one or two more. Uh, we have seen OK status when it goes ahead and does it, it gives say OK. Uh, no, if when it goes ahead and uh, checks, it didn't do anything, if the state is the current or uh, it didn't do any modifications, it just do uh, OK, no changes for me. Change is when there's a change, fail is when it fails, unreachable. 
skip days like example when you have a condition and it skips that uh, module it uh, skips and it those are the main uh, task statuses when you're running them uh, so these are all the status okay we might have some skipped and other things changed all the status okay so any questions before we go to the next ones we can take at the last also Okay, cool. We can cover this. So that's like all uh, last session, this session, whatever I showed showed you is like if you want to try out things, try out simple things in Ansible. That's how you do it. Uh, but you are seriously, if you have like uh, uh, several machines you have to configure, several roles that you have to do, Ansible suggests a structure for the whole thing, for your roles, your whole uh, playbooks. So that if you follow, you can achieve a lot of modularity, a lot of, you can avoid a lot of duplication. You can organize everything. You can have a separate thing for variables, uh, modules as a separate task, as a separate thing, handlers in a different thing, files. It uses the whole structure. Like for any framework that's important, right? If you have, if you don't have the structure defined, it like all becomes random. So Ansible gives you the structure. This is the structure. Ansible uh, suggests, and if you follow this, it makes your life very, very easy. I'll tell you why it's easy. Right now I showed you like, uh, when I want to include a variable, I should have to say like, uh, give the name and all, uh, but this makes it very, very, very easy. So here common is a role that I have, and uh, it will have tasks, handlers, templates, files. By default, these are the folders. You can go and say, for now, I only need task handlers, variables, and files. Other things I don't need, you can skip them. Uh, but there is an Ansible Galaxy. I'll talk about Ansible Galaxy. I think I gave an, a brief, uh, I talked briefly on Ansible Galaxy. It's a collection of a lot of Ansible modules. Uh, so Ansible Galaxy in it common, it will create the whole structure for you. Like, uh, for example, if I say, uh, where am I here? So it's, so in the roles here, I have role one and role two. I'll come here and say, Ansible Galaxy in it, web servers. Okay, whole web server is created. So if you see that I have a web server folder, let's see what it has. I will print the tree structure of it. So inside web server, I have defaults, a main.ml handlers, all this has been created for you. Uh, so you won't do any mistakes this way, or you can manually go and say like, this is my role, create it, and create this directory, create a main.ml, and uh, that works too but this is easy for me i'll just leave the other ones as uh, empty whatever i want i'll start using right so why is this why do you need this so i, think I have an example uh, we can also go and create this in your organization you your task is to you install web servers, app servers, and databases, or something, Java and other things. Or you have three sets of operating system, Linux, uh, uh, Windows, AX. So you want to install specific things on Linux and configure it a different way. You want to install specific things on Windows, configure it a different way. So you can, you have a role defined at the top level. This is your main thing, servers folder. Here you have the main playbooks. You can have separate playbooks for your web server, app server, and DB servers. Or you can have one playbook for all. And in each one, you have a structure that I defined that we uh, just created. And uh, it has all the tasks and everything there. 
this is the structure inside i said web servers so this is web servers and uh, i have tasks and everything you can create each of these roles and then create your main thing so let's see how how it looks when we do it someone uh, unmuted can you mute please so let's go to session two i don't have any roles here it's all like uh, thing so here i have my http server is a role uh, so let's do the roles here So web servers has been created. Let's go to web servers. I have all this. Add task ls. I have a main.ml, right? So when I have this structure, well, let's uh, let's do a small thing in uh, main.ml. Open. Let's open main.ml to write everything. Um, oh, I know I have servers, and uh, I'll just print a task. That's all. My module name is uh, debug. I'm printing it. We will print the same thing. Ansible is family. I think that's what it is. Okay. So I'm here inside the web server's role tasks. There's a main.ml. I just added a small thing there. Uh, that's all. So I'll come back to the main place, which is uh, basic. Uh, so I went here inside web servers. In this, I went to task folders and uh, I have a debug task, a debug module. I'm calling a debug module there. Now I'm back to this place. So I need to create a playbook now, right? I'll create. Let's. Okay, I'll create a something main playbook dot haml. All I have to so I'll explain. Let me read. I said web servers. That's what I said. So what I'm saying is, in here, I'm here. I have this role, web servers role. Just call this. That's all I'm doing. So what it does is, it goes and goes into the task folder, which is uh, here. Checks for if it can find a main dot ml, and it calls. So it's simple. You're not uh, let's see if it executes. Let's execute and see if it works. Uh, hopefully, it should work. Okay. Print, 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 print. Debug. Debug. I did something. Um, maybe I shouldn't specify the host there. Control C. PD web servers task. Yeah. I think that all looks 
curved, right? Let's. Hyphen space name Srini, I think that might uh, be it. Okay. Why did I not put hyphens? When it, where were you saying hyphen space name? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, I didn't have a space. I thought of copying this since uh, I think it okay. Uh, I I might be doing something. Debug is not in India. Yeah, debug. Ah. Right. Uh, so that's why I use a editor like uh, VS Code. So if you have something like this, if there is something wrong, it just gives you an error. Uh, copy paste things. I didn't want to do copy paste. Ansible hyphen flavor. I do I need host name. So what it does is final, let me check the final one. Okay, it still needs it somewhere. Let's I did a host role for Apache Oracle LS Apache Tars LS Oh, it doesn't even when you put it here, you doesn't even need a task thing. It's a task file. Let's see one simple thing. Web server task. Okay, so it's a task folder. You just have to specify the task there. So it printed my message. WD. So what I did was more right. I only said call this role. So it went into this folder in the task, whatever is there, it called. So task can call some variables from uh, task might be calling some things from here. So it goes, if it has a variables like uh, defined, it goes and checks the main.ml here. And if it has handlers that we talked about, it goes and checks here. If it has a files, it goes uh, to the files thing. So by default, it knows where to check. If they are different, if it's not main.ml, then you need to call them. Like if variables, uh, 
if you keep some other name, then you need to call it include it. If not, by default, it calls main.ml. If yours is simple, uh, you can directly call them. Uh, it directly calls, you can put it them in main.ml. And uh, so we, show, we saw how variables can be defined in a separate file type. Right? Now in the main.ml, I can define variable and I can I don't have to call it here as long as it's main.ml. Uh, we can also try that. What's the time? Oh, seven. Um, simple thing we can try. I'll go to web server. I have tasks, variables. I'll go to variable. May I have a main.yaml. My name Olan Okay, I'll go to task now. Main dot ML. I said my name. So it printed my name. I didn't in task I'm calling I'm printing a variable, but I didn't specify where it is. So it by default it goes into this folder main.ml and it includes them. But if this name is different, it it cannot find that. Then you have to include and everything. In the previous example, what we did was uh, we include we have included explicitly included variables. Now if I follow this structure, I don't have to include anything. It just knows where to find things. So that's the power so that uh, everyone knows if you are one team, another team wants to come and see like uh, you, are you have a big Ansible project. If you don't have the structure defined, you will do your own things. You will have a utilities folders to create utilities. Uh, you can define however you are like comfortable with. This forces you to be have the structure in everything in a similar way. So you won't go wrong here. If another team comes and wants to look at your thing, they know exactly where to go to look for things. Uh, they don't have to search, oh, where is this calling? How is this calling? Uh, any other framework you have defined. If I go ahead and go and look, like if you have a framework defined and if I go and look at your framework, it takes some time to understand the structure, why, how the flow is happening. Here, that's not the case. Uh, you know the structure. Just, all if you follow ansible way this is how it is it there is no other thing and that makes it very very easy uh, we can go into more deep into next sessions how this helps how where how can we define like a create the whole site thing how can we define it okay. uh, but uh, that's that's the power of ansible here you just say role web servers then you can say app servers uh, there are a lot of combinations that you can do. Okay, so you can start playing if you have access. Kaja, I think, tried to create some Unix boxes, but I don't know, we didn't do. Uh, we will try if we can provide some Unix boxes, but if you have some Unix box, you need just one machine. Uh, if you have, want to connect to Windows, I didn't cover. I can cover in next session how to connect to Windows source from Unix. I think that's all I have. Uh, I did a running demo. Any questions I can uh, take now? Yes, anything under, that's like a dictionary. Under task, whatever you do, that's the dictionary format. Yes. Uh, that's how Ansible does it. Uh, debug it. 
keyboard debug is a module right uh, you're talking about this one how So this one you're talking about. Anything under tasks is a module. Ansible has uh, hundreds of modules there. And maybe someone answered it, but hundreds of modules. This is a module. So look at like, go to Google and say Ansible modules or Ansible debug modules. This is just to print. When you're uh, developing, when you have some issues, you want to do some debugging, you will use this. Or if you want to print something to uh, output, uh, you, will, you will do that you will use this. So debug is a module. Uh, I think this I answered. This is the AML format you don't need. I didn't use it anywhere. I did not use uh, dot, 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 but AML suggests that start with dot, dot, dot every file so that everyone knows it's an AML file. We don't have to use it. I'm not using it uh, anywhere. So, or if you got a M command not found, can you try DNF? I think uh, DNF should be, okay, I don't have DNF. I have M, do I have apt? I have apt. So try apt, apt get, well, is that the command? Oh, okay. Install Ansible. Uh, I did something wrong here. What is the install thing for Ansible? So you can try other things. Um, you can install Ansible, yum, other ways, and uh, you can try it out. One of these should work here. Yum, DN, RPM, yeah, you can try RPM. RPM is the, the old one uh, that's from Red Hat long back since long back. We have RPM, but I don't know if it's RPM install or, uh, in, or minus minus install. Uh, I didn't use them lately, but uh, one of these options, try them. They should be available. One of them should be available. I will do, there are like all these modules, error modules. Uh, I will try out in the next session things. More error handling, more AML syntax. Okay, someone did it, pseudo apt get should work. If it, Applet mostly is for Ubuntu, I think. So I don't know if Linux Red Hat, uh, I have sent to us here. Um, so it should be there. Just try them out. Uh, oh, Mac. Uh, anyone tried? If Divya, anyone from uh, tried on Mac, we can try and see what's, uh, what, what package managers does Mac have. Uh, we can. We come out of this meeting. RPM install Ansible. You should find it. Yeah, this is a homebrew is another very popular pip is one pip is very popular uh, apple has it should have some proprietary uh, apple is a little strict in getting all these things mac uh, so we should try it out we can try uh, a couple of us have macs so we can try out mac and let you know i never tried uh, 
yum and other things i tried it works maybe they are not default uh, i thought uh, yum is being replaced with the uh, dnf okay. any other things you can directly talk also You want to know calling set of tasks with dictionaries, set of tasks within dictionary. I can try this out, uh, Shiva. I'll try this out. Set of dictionary. Um, we can try this. We can try. Okay. I think. Uh, So if there is nothing, you can you can mail me, you can post me, LinkedIn, anywhere if you have more things. I'll try to copy all this into my Git uh, repository again. The last time I shared, uh, I think uh, if you go to github.com, there is 1975, you can, I'll try to share them here um, under IAC demos. I will I will do that. I didn't do for the current session. If you want to try them out. Okay. So I'm stopping the presentation uh, recording.